Hello, hello, I'm back again, everybody, and this time we're going over Technopolis. Now, a gentium, because holy crap, these people need some help. And with the aid of some frankly incredibly outdated 2019 old redesigns, this process should be even easier. So let's not waste any time and get to it. Yeet! First up on the chopping block is Mikey, based off of this guy. Now, Mikey stands out because he's like one of the few Technopolis to actually get like a notable speaking point, notably from Gene's Origins Episode 1. Oh, you take Orange Nutri Bars, do you? I like the purple ones, me. How lucky we are that Computer Supreme looks after everything! Praise the great Computer Supreme! Oh, are you going to the opening ceremony of the Scientists of the Year prize? Let's go together! No doubt Dr. X is going to win again! <laughs> Obviously, as you can see, this guy likes to talk. A lot! Expository, even! So, I guess this could carry over into his um, character because, of course, like most things, I did not write anything down, but these characters do have some kind of character behind them, some personalities behind them. And with Mikey, I figured he'd be more of like a, uh, obviously a talkative sort of person, kind of unaware of social situations, too caught up in his own little headspace. And with his outfit, I do intend on carrying stuff over from the original outfits that I like by obviously upgrading it. And as you can see with his, I was going for like a Hermes sort of situation. Like maybe he's a type of messenger or maybe he just likes to fly around a lot. And you can see that with his design. I thought I could incorporate that more with the Technopolis in general of their liking to fly because I don't know, I don't think it's spoiling, but like, I took the also original approach of having like each island based off of like a type of element. And with Technopolis, originally it was gonna be water because they're out on a giant rock in the middle of the ocean. But then again, so is gunpowder. But I figured air would be more liking to them since they like to fly around a lot. I know technically with the fairies, they should be air, but that's another discussion for another day. But. I kind of had that for them, so since they're going to be in air and they like to hover and fly around a lot, I could um, incorporate that into the design. So their clothing, not only are based off of like ancient Greek stuff, it's also based off like those wing suits, like aerodynamic suits, sort of. And with like very little th loose clothing, it's mostly like skin tight to make it easier for them to fly around. And of course I had to add a lot of glowy bits in there and he's more into like the newest gadgets more than most like he's very gadget heavy he's like one of those rich but not rotten kids who just keeps buying new gadgets as soon as a new one comes out uh, I, I think I, I think it looks good I like his goggles I like his um shoes because of course I tried to like research like how would a jetpack realistically work with hover shoes and all that and hopefully I did it justice in this design um, I think I did. I, I think I did. And their biology would probably help with that. Also, his name is Miltiades now, aka Milt, because I want to use actually Greek names. His name means Red Earth, and it was all too fitting for him. Alright, next on the chopping board, Beth, based off of this character right here. Let's get to it. Uh, with Beth. I figure she'd be more like a sort of fashionista type of person, like someone, not, maybe not fashionista, but definitely more feminine and kind of like cares about her appearance a lot. And since so there's a tragic lack of updos and ancient Greek was like all about that, I decided to incorporate that. Of course, I kept her veil, but I tried to make it more flighty, like try to tie into that earlier aerodynamic thing. And also, character-wise, I think she's more caring, more like into like a team player. And I figure she has some connection with uh, Ruby at the time, and like because there's a stunning lack of <laughs> female pirates on the island, an obvious sausage fest, really. So at some point in her development, she was actually gonna like become close with Ruby, and I guess be a mother figure to her may or may not have shipped her with Ruben oh it's old so I don't even know there's gonna be canon anymore but she um that sort of motherly I guess aspect of her carried over to her relationship with Ruby and she, that was like a positive female influence because there's a stunning lack of that in the um original show what with Alex and um, Leonora's dead mother who you know is dead combined with the fairies being jerks so she was like supposed to be a positive addition to that. 
She was also physically active, like a dodgeball player of sorts. So she might be a coach too, maybe? And her name means full, Tina, which means light. Alrighty, next up, Moldera. Based off of this cute little character over here, I only just now noticed the earpiece that she had when I was uh, researching these screenshots. I have no idea where I got that name from. I don't know if it was even Greek or if I just made it up, but with her, I actually thought she could have like a relationship with Mikey, like a sort of sibling-esque kind of relationship with Mikey being like the golden retriever type who's like running around and like not caring about stuff too much. Needing her to have to like rein him in and be like, come on Mikey, get it together. And she's not the kind of person to be afraid of just like slapping somebody upside the head when you're being stupid. I figured she could have more like a general s sort of thing i'm still working over how that works but like a higher position essentially of authority and i was looking at her arm and i was thinking you know what why don't we turn this into a robot arm because i have no idea what that cuff could do like realistically i try to keep the blue dots and gems looking things on their outfits functional since agentium this is kind of more into that i, I think it look good I, again i'm not a cybernetic person before this worth i think it, I mean, it's agentium might as well be technology so maybe she had like an accident it came out good and with the outfits i try to keep to like these geometric shapes because you can't tell but like well maybe you can i try to uh look up real playmobil figures for references and top agents was so hard it was so hard to keep a futuristic aspect and an asian greek aspect and make them look like they married together and the shapes She's got these really gnarly lightning scars. I renamed her Melissa, but I was like, uh, it sounds a bit too modern. I want to change it. So I changed it to Melita. And I figured Mikey could have a ball calling her Melita and angering her because she's also short. All right, these next two are really interesting because it turns out they have way more appearances than I initially thought, Daphne and Nicholas. But in the show, they actually had proper names. Professor Dallas and Professor Houston. Uh -huh. Hmm. My dear Dallas, this discovery is going to make some noise. For sure, my dear Houston. It's going to be an explosive discovery. So yeah, uh, I guess we could do something with this too. And we're going to start off with Daphne. Uh, Daphne actually had, or at least her model had, plenty of appearances in Technopolis. And she stands out being the only person to wear pink. And she's usually with Dr. X, usually as his assistant. So I figured that could uh, kind of carry into it like she probably works at a, a high rank lab somewhere or she has like close connections because she did show up in a commercial with him after all. Um, citizens, do you hate dirt? Yes, we hate it. And uh, character wise, I imagine her being bubbly and like kind of eccentric, probably because of the pink and the uh, chemistry scene didn't help. So I figured she'd be like one of the more eccentric technopolans, which honestly puts her closer to real life scientists because let's be real here, real life scientists are weird. So funny how they get typecast as dead pants. Like anytime you have a group of people throwing cats out of windows or giving drugs and LSD to spiders for the sake of science, you have to come out of that knowing that it's just one of the weirdest things you have ever seen. Whew. Anyway, back to Daphne. I also wanted her to be a bit more aesthetic compared to the others. She had like all these different color highlighters I got or styluses. Maybe it like traces light in different colors. I'm still working on that. But she has that. As you can see, she's got the typical lab color that um stereotypical scientists have she got like this little headlamp thing because after all she's still a brilliant scientist especially into like chemistry and all of that also you can tell that she like stays up a lot doing experiments or whatever other stuff scientists do i did like the leg veils thing going on i wanted to alter it though and just turn it into like proper pants because the earlier ones look like bloomers but um i like how she came out her uh skin tone was a bit too tan so i did tone that down in the final uh piece but um i like that she has uh a notable design that i like is that she has blue spots that are just normal spots like they're not functional and despite her eccentricities or maybe even because of them i also imagine she'd be a friend of gene slash pathos because he kind of has a reputation there just a little bit just a tiny bit so I imagine that she'd be like one of the few people he agrees with next to Mikey possibly 
Now on to Nicholas, based off of, of course, Houston from the show. Now, Nicholas was a bit harder to um, come up with something because other than that one scene in like cleaning day when he's in Dr. X's lab, is that, that too to stand out about him just like everybody else? But I imagine he'd also be like one of the head scientists close up to Dr. X, renamed him for Electric, so he probably has a higher position. I also gave him a fancy sort of sash thing and these headpiece to indicate that he has some sort of rank somewhere. I, again, not exactly sure the position. He's definitely high rank and he definitely have some weight behind him, but like maybe he helps oversee some departments up rank, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all I can really say about it for now. I guess with his uh, demeanor, he's a bit more serious. Like he's not, out there like Daphne is, like Daffy Daphne. That was a <laughs> nickname that she kind of carried in some of the iterations history that I made up years ago. But um, for Houston slash Nicholas, yeah, he's um, obviously he's all about like being on time. He's about uh, maintaining meetings, but he's still absolutely down for some clowning stuff. Like he's down to be a clown with uh, Daphne possibly. I said possibly because I'm not sure if I'm going to keep the similar relationship dynamics. I mean, it almost feels criminal to um, break them apart now that I've seen how they've um, been close in the show. I may or may not keep them together in some aspect, may or may not ship them. I don't know. Only time will tell how the wind will flow between these two, but I am pleased with his design. It is so hard tried to come up with an impressive looking design i went through his design quite a lot to like indicate rank and also look cool like something that somebody would actually want to watch i mean look at i'm still not sure about it i'm not sure about the c3 sash but it's what i got also i changed his name from nicholas because again it sounded a bit too modern and i instead went with nikitas so there, there he is oh boy Ah, here's one manga, a possibly controversial figure in the show because some people ship her with Jean, some don't. I mean, they look cute together, I can see why. Uh, <laughs> Rupert looks so done in this one. Uh, but as for me, I'm gonna go to a different route for right now. Not exactly sure how their relationship's gonna work, but uh, in my iteration, she's her role is kind of based off of like being dr x's other assistant or one of his assistants and i guess she's like more in the field or maybe she was just a recent hire at the time but in the show she was one of his assistants that he also bravely left behind for witches to kidnap and in the super four had to go and save her but what this iteration she's more of a secretary kind of thing and i was trying to capture that with like a typical pencil skirt looking tunic that you would imagine a secretary would wear i tried to make her look more oh, what's the word not strict but like more professional i'm just gonna say professional with her hair was done and all that i like this weird collar thing that i had for her and i also like how her outfit is kind of like showing on the side so i also kept that i like having her hair off to one side i also gave her that little mouthpiece to make it look like she's like somebody who sits in the office taking calls from someone uh, and personality uh again it's too early to say 100 percent sure because the problem with making stories is that so many things could change in the middle of making something. For now, I would say her core character is, is just being serious, probably fed up with Dr. X slash Emperor Electric in his um, eccentric ways, especially when he leaves her behind. Like, I imagine like she's just like one more bad day or bad joke away from just up and quitting. <laughs> But quits aware. I don't know. I think one of the only reasons, another reason why she stays is because of like societal ex expectations. Like quitting, you oh, you quit being an intern at Dr. X's. Oh, what are you, a weakling or something? And I imagine she'd be like that. Like she's, she really wants to go off, but proper societal expectations and just like personal dignities and pride is like what's keeping her from completely going AWOL. With her, she's like, now in terms of, a relationship with Pathos, uh, 
they may or may not know each other before they meet proper in the story. Like, maybe have some history. I may or may not uh, fix that. Like I said, only time could really tell, but I do have some ideas on the back burner. Like, I have some ideas. I'm debating on whether she's a major character or not, or she's just like a character from Paphos' past. But only time will tell, for sure, what I do with her. Uh, also, it turns out her name was already Greek, but I decided to change it to Makaria, which ironically means sweet. <laughs> Even though her expression looks a little bitter. <laughs> some playful irony. Alright, sleepy boy, you're up next. Based off of this guy, I think, judging by how much white in the shape of his hairstyle, uh, what? <laughs> I imagine he'd be like an um, announcer for a scene in Go Ruby. Citizens of Technopolis, welcome to the annual Technopolis Pot Run, where the best pilots built by the best scientists compete. So he's probably... I apologize. I really need to write my character stuff down. It's like I'm so used to having it in my head. But anyway, I imagine he also work at a tech help place. And that's why he's always tired. And the announcement thing is like a hobby or a side hustle. And he jumps from being this sleepy milk toast looking dude to like, Let's get ready to rumble! Like, that sort of thing. Like, I had a similar dynamic going with Twinkle Spin, the uh, fairy speaker. And he would also kind of have like that where they just jump up and her voice is like completely changed into a completely different character. And then as soon as the announcements are done, he's being back to sleepy. And that's probably like his one joy in life of where he can just like shout his head off and have it be socially acceptable. That or he's being forced against his will to do it. I um channeled his like inner retail worker. Something I can relate to all too well to um, get this expression because that's kind of what he's going through is like he's constantly tired from either helping other people because machines can only do so much. I imagine the poor guy is trapped in a cubicle somewhere, hence his paler than usual sickly looking skin. He's kind of underweight as you can see with how baggy and loose his clothes are falling off of him. He looks like a zombie and his name Adamantios ironically means like unconquerable or something like that. Uh, and I also wanted to change his gauntlet so they can look like he's literally weighed down by his responsibilities. But well, like all these screens like I imagine each screen is like a different person needing help and he is just and he's also got a screen in his face talking in his ear like this man. You poor poor man. <laughs> Somebody save him. Give him a coffee. Or better yet, a vacation. There we have it, all eight characters. I really like how they all came out. I'm proud of them. And let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. I personally really like. Wait a minute. Somebody's missing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What the heck? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I counted them all over again, so what the heck gives? Who am I missing? Wait a minute, go back. Oh, shoot, Paul. Uh, frick. Okay, Paul. <laughs> yeah, based off of this guy, I think, uh, judging by all the black, perfect face, by the way. And <laughs> I'm so sorry, Paul. I completely forgot you existed. Uh, Ram. Yeah, he was hard. I'm not gonna even lie. I think even his original design was hard. And this is probably also gonna explain why he's probably the most different looking. Like, he kind of has like a teenager vibe, but that wasn't what I was going for. I was going more for like one of those constantly in a screen sort of people. Constantly got a face in their screen. And what better way than that than having like a video game? Because they technically do exist in the show. So I kind of carried over that and it looks like he's wearing a backpack but I imagine it's also a jetpack and he also has those like hover shoes that Mikey had. He's an extremely scrawny sort of person and I was debating whether just making him an outright teenager because the show is really lacking in like young people in general like kids and teenagers, preteens, except for like Cycronier Jr. But like I don't think they count because they're not humans. <laughs> Be racist against the aliens. But uh for Paul... Uh, I also wanted to capture like maybe he's like super into aesthetics too that's why he's got like flashy unconventional looking clothes maybe from an upper class family like that's the sort of thing I had going on again I don't know if I captured it but at this point I was just trying to post this video and I was dawdling on these people 
long enough because it's like you find one mistake you find 50 million and the video progress just drags out but for him uh, I, I, I'm looking at it again I think it came out good I like the um, little console. Hey guys, what video game do you think he's playing? Wrong answer only. And I changed his name to Paul Sanius? Paul Sanius? Reliever of Sorrow. Uh, <laughs> his parents probably say something different though. Okay, now I got all eight people together. Uh, and I again I really like how they all came out. Let me know which one was your favorite and while I'm at it I want to extend an apology to Technopolis because I did not respect your game It turns out there's way more diversity than I expected It's not the most standout diversity, but it's still present and I has probably enough material to make Even more characters if anybody's interested Particularly this girl right here I don't know, it's just the way that she says bravo Jean that I really like. And thus ends the video. So yeah, while it wasn't the most perfect example of diversity, I thought it was good. And oh my gosh, I just realized there's a lot of redheads in this city. It's like redhead country. You can outdo Ireland and Scotland. But anyway, thank you for watching this video, thank you for listening to my rambles, and I hope that you're looking forward to looking at these characters being fleshed out in the future. I know I am, and see you next time! Bye!